Hello, everybody. Hope things are uh, going well for you. Um, again, not zero people on the broadcast, so that's great. Um, we're going to talk tonight about uh, another type of navigation problem called uh, parallel sailings. Parallel sailings. And so uh, if you think back to all the different types of navigation problems that there are out there to solve, there's quite a few. Um, we've done uh, chronometer and ETA problems. You know, there's all these other types of problems you can run into on your licensing exam uh, questions. Uh, we're going to talk today in a category called sailings. Sailings are pretty challenging for some folks, but we're going to uh, we're going to uncover those and talk about a particular type of sailings problem. So, first of all, why do we care about parallel sailings problems at all? Uh, two reasons, as ever. One, for your license. Um, passing of a test, right? that might be a reason. And no matter what country you're in, there's gonna be some kind of governing body that uh, talks about uh, how to pass your exams and gives you requirements. And parallel sailings is often a type of problem that you're gonna see on an exam. All right, and then the second reason is, um, it is actually somewhat of a useful topic and I'll give you a, a hypothetical case here. So if you wanted to take your ship from say New York Harbor over to Ireland as a destination, uh, the fastest way to do that is what's called a great circle route. And if you've ever taken a long distance plane ride, you'll see it's this big curve that kind of crosses over the, uh, the entire ocean basin to get there. So a big curve, that would be a great circle. And it's the fastest point between any two, uh, or it's the fastest route between any two points on the Earth's surface, right? The problem with that, say in the North Atlantic, as an example, is depending on the season, first of all, there's uh, maybe some storms and some icebergs happening up there near Greenland, Iceberg Alley. Uh, and second thing, a great circle route might actually cut across land and cause you to go aground. So in the case of the North Atlantic, this is like your classic type of um, problem. You don't really wanna take your ship near the Grand Banks of Newfoundland or over the uh, area where the icebergs are. And so in the winter season, the U.S. Coast Guard International Ice Patrol and other international bodies are going to be marking out where these icebergs are, and they're going to give you a limit that says there's no icebergs south of that line. So if you were taking your ship from New York to Europe, the way that you might want to do it is uh, you might want to steam straight east for a little while to some point in the North Atlantic and then take a great circle route from there. So although it's not the most efficient way to get there, it's a pretty efficient and safe way to carry out your transit. So this portion right here, where you're sailing due east or due west in a different portion of the world, is called uh, parallel sailings. And so we can do that calculation with a little bit of um, trigonometry, but don't, don't worry too much. It's really just kind of plugging in numbers there. So this is a classic case of what's called composite sailing. And one portion of that uh, composite or composite is uh, the parallel portion here. So again, two reasons for doing this, one for your license, two if you wanted to plan a journey like this. So we're gonna kind of talk about uh, the license element tonight. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some definitions that we need to know before we uh, kind of move on. And the first definition is gonna be letter D, and that's gonna equal, um, the distance, right? And so later on, we're going to see that there's some formulas that we need, and uh, D is the distance. Yeah, Venu spherical trigonometry is um, is the type of trig that we would end up doing, uh, but we're really just going to be plugging in numbers to a formula. So you can tell your friends that you did spherical trig, but uh, it's really just going to be uh, one formula that we we pipe we pipe in there. All right, so D is going to stand for distance. Uh, the next abbreviation we've got C is going to equal our course. So distance is always going to be in nautical miles. Course is always going to be in degrees true. Degrees true, right? And so when we're doing parallel sailings, we're going to have a course of 090 degrees true or 270 degrees true, due east, due west, and we're there. All right, so D and C, those are two important terms. Now, the next term is one you may not have heard of before, but it's called P, and that's going to be departure. Departure. And so I'll say what that is, and then we'll spend a little time talking about it. Departure is the distance between any two meridians or lines of longitude at a given latitude. 
So the distance between two meridians at a given latitude. So give me just a moment and we'll draw a little diagram to explain this one. I guess we can wipe Africa and Europe off the map. So if this was your globe, and we're gonna picture it in three dimensions, that's the equator. And here is some, some other latitude line further north or further towards the pole. If you then took a skewer and went right through the North Pole, right through the South Pole, down to the bottom, out the bottom of the South Pole, um, you could kind of represent things in three dimensions and use your imagination here. But at the equator, if you took a slice out of the Earth, this arc right here is going to be a, a difference in longitudes. And it's going to be called uh, D low, difference in longitudes. Well, that word that we were just talking about, P, for departure, is very similar to that, but it's at a different point. So like way up here, if you took a slice out of the Earth, this distance here is called P. So it's the amount of uh, nautical miles between any two lines of longitude at a given latitude. So let's go on a little thought experiment here. If you found yourself at the North Pole and you were able to get away from Santa Claus and all the reindeer, how far would it be between any given um, degree of longitude? Say from zero degrees longitude at Greenwich to one degree longitude, how far would it be? Well, it would be infinitesimally small at the pole. Say you went one kilometer south, one kilometer south. That one degree of longitude is now on the order of 50 or 100 meters. As you continue south, they're going to spread apart until you get to the equator where it's going to be maximized. So the lines of longitude converge at the pole and diverge as they get to the equator. And so that element of um, spherical trig, as you say, but uh, the element of the Earth is going to be something that matters when we do our calculations. So our terms so far were D for, D for distance, C for course, P for departure. And departure is the distance between those two meridians at a given latitude, right? At a given latitude. We just mentioned a second ago, D low, D low. That's going to be the difference in longitude. Why are these not the same? Well, they're very similar, but they're not the same. Difference in longitude is going to be a, a number of degrees that you're going between. So like, say, longitude 10 to longitude 20, the difference in longitude would be 10 degrees. Departure is going to be in terms of nautical miles. It's going to be a distance at that latitude. Right? And then the last term we've got L is going to be latitude. Latitude. All right? So L for latitude. Uh, D low for difference in longitude, P for departure, and then D and C for distance and course. So those are the definitions, and those are going to come back in a few moments as we talk about how to solve these problems. There is one little skill set that we need before we get into the actual problem solving, and that's going to be how to convert between minutes and tenths of degrees. So as an example, if you had 24 degrees and 13 minutes, um, it turns out when we go into the formulas, we can't really use it in this form. We need it to be in terms of decimals because we're going to be entering stuff into a scientific calculator. So it needs to be more straightforward than that. So if I wanted to convert this into tenths of a degree, the way that we do it is we're going to take this little part right here and you're going to divide it by 60. So if you took 13 divided by 60, you end up with point, um, 2167, 0.2167, right? So this is going to be equal to 24.2167 degrees. So we've converted that between um, degrees and minutes into uh, tenths of a degree, into tenths of a degree, right? So you do that by dividing this portion by 60. Likewise, if you wanted to kind of go the opposite direction, say you had a number of... Uh, 12.61 degrees, how would we turn that into degrees and minutes? Well, again, you take this part right here, and this time, instead of dividing by 60, we'll multiply by 60. So if you take the 0.61, multiply by 60, 
you end up with 36.6, 36.6 minutes. So we've got 12 degrees, 36.6 minutes. So that's just a skill set that we're going to need to have when we talk about how to solve the uh, formulas. So, so far we've given an example of why this is important. We've defined some terms, D, C, P for departure, uh, difference in longitude, and then L for latitude. There's two formulae that we need to know when we're solving these types of problems as well. The first one is this. P, or departure, is going to be equal to D sine C. And if you see this sine thing there and you're curious about what that is, maybe I should write it a little clearer. How about that? D sine C. Uh, sine is a trigonometric function. So they knew, uh, yep, spherical trig, you've got it right in the chat box there. But it's just a, a button on your scientific calculator is what it comes down to. And so it has to do with angles and, and curves and everything, but uh, it's really just a formula. So the departure or the difference um, the distance between two meridians at a given latitude is going to be equal to your distance times the sine of your course. Now you may you may be selling, saying to yourself, you know, self, I thought we were doing parallel sailings. Uh, you're exactly right, and uh, you'll notice that if you were ever to take the sine of a course of 90 or 270, it's always going to equal one. So this formula is really just going to turn into p is equal to d. Um, but it's going to be either positive or negative. So that's why I'm including this formula. It's going to be a very easy one for us. The second formula that we need is going to be P, or departure, is equal to DLO, or difference in longitude, right? P is equal to DLO cosine latitude. So in this case, P, or departure, which is the distance between two meridians at a given latitude, is equal to DLO, or the, the difference in longitude in terms of uh, arc, times the cosine of your latitude. And going back to that uh, drawing that I made, where we were in three dimensions measuring slices of the Earth at given latitudes, uh, this is where you can see that departure is directly proportional to your latitude. Directly proportional to your latitude. Okay, so that's a brief intro to uh, the, the skills that we need, the types of... Um, problems you're going to see, and then also the, um, the formula that we're going to do. So um, if you go into the description for this video, or if you're watching it later um, in the notes or in the chat box on the right of your screen, I've entered in the first practice problem that we're going to solve. The practice problem reads, you depart latitude 25 degrees, 54 minutes north, longitude 00938 east, and you steam 592 nautical miles on a course of 270 degrees true. What is the longitude of arrival? Well, this is a parallel sailings problem because you're steaming on a course of 270 degrees true or 090 degrees true, right? And so the way that we're gonna tackle this is we're gonna organize our information first. So what information do we know? Well, we go for a distance of 592 nautical miles. 592 nautical miles is going to be equal to D. What course are we on? Well, our course is 270 degrees true, or due west. The other thing I'll note is that uh, often on your license exam questions, you're going to find yourself near the prime meridian or the international date line. So they're always out to trick you. So be careful when you're paying attention to your longitude lines there. What else do we know? Um, we know that we start at a latitude of 25 degrees and 54 minutes, and we start at a longitude of 00938. So those aren't useful to us in their current form. So 20, if our latitude is equal to 25 degrees, 54 minutes, we need to convert that into uh, decimal degrees. So 25 degrees, 54 minutes. How do we convert that? We talked about that briefly. We're going to take this 54, we're going to put it over 60, and you'll get an answer of 25.9 degrees. So our latitude is 25.9 degrees there. Okay. Uh, the longitude, we don't necessarily need to do anything with that just yet. Um, we're going we're gonna to get there in a minute. So let's think about the two formula that we needed. The first one was uh, regarding the departure. And... Again, with a parallel sailings problem, 
you're on a course of 270 or, or 090, the, uh, the sign of that's always going to be 1. But just for, just for the heck of it, we'll say P for departure is equal to D sine C. And we'll plug in our numbers. P is equal to have a scientific calculator. Go ahead and uh, type that stuff in. And you'll see that the sine of 270 is negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1 times anything is going to be that same thing, just to the negative. So our departure is going to be negative 592, right? So what does that mean? Well, it means that you're heading west. Yes, you already knew that from the way that the problem uh, was written, but it's nice to quantify that our P is actually negative 592 because that'll help us a little bit later on. So I'm just going to park that information up here. Negative 592, and we're going to move on. The next formula that we talked about was um, the, the difference in longitude formula. So d lo, difference in longitude, is going to be equal to, um, or I'm sorry, we're going to say it's the, the p formula. p is equal to the difference in longitude, right, times the uh, cosine of the latitude. p equals the d, d lo cosine l. Uh, the reason I took a pause there is there's a different way to orient this formula involving a trigonometric function called secant, which is the inverse cosine. Uh, but we don't really need to memorize that. Um, I'll just write it over here if you want. D lo is equal to, um, to P secant L. If you are really fond of that method of solving problems, then uh, that's available to you. But um, we're going to use this formula, P D lo cosine L, and we're going to plug in the information that we know. So we do know P. That's going to be negative 592. It's equal to D lo, and that's kind of what we're looking for, times the cosine of our latitude. And our latitude was 25.9 degrees. Right. So we've got to do just a little bit of um, reordering things here. So we would say maybe d lo, or difference in longitude, is equal to the cosine of 25.9 divided by negative 592, right? So if you've got a calculator, go ahead and take a moment to, to punch all that in, and I will, um, I'll do the same. I end up with uh, d lo is equal to 600 and negative 658.1 minutes of arc, right? d lo is negative 658.1. Well, what, what have we just done? We just figured out that at a latitude of 25.9, the difference in longitude for a distance of 592 miles is 658.1 minutes of arc. If you took this and went to the North Pole, your latitude is now 90, and this all becomes a zero, right? If you were at the equator, it's going to be a different story. So we figured out d lo is equal to negative 658.1. So we'll just uh, repark that up here. Minutes of arc. All right, and then to kind of put the bow tie on this problem and solve it uh, in terms of Coast Guard, we need to turn this into a number of degrees. Like that's the question is how many uh, degrees are we traveling here? So 658.1 um, is equal to some amount of degrees. So if you divide that by 60, you get uh, 10.968 degrees. Negative 10.968 degrees, All right? And so now we can kind of remember where we started in terms of longitude. So um, the longitude that we began with, longitude 1, and uh, one symbol you may have seen for that is lambda. We won't get too crazy here. We'll just call that longitude 1, right, was where we began at uh, 9 degrees 38, 0, 0, 9 degrees 38 minutes east. And then we've traveled uh, negative 10.968 degrees 
in a certain direction. The negative indicates that we're traveling west. The course being 270 is also that we're traveling west. So where do we end up? Well, we're not quite done yet. We've got to turn this into decimal degrees as well. So if you take 38, divide that by 60, you'll end up with uh, longitude 1 being uh, 9.633 degrees. So you start here and you travel this distance. What, where do you end up? Right? You go uh, 9.633 minus 10.968. Type all that into the calculator. And you get negative 1.335. What did we say this negative sign is earlier? We say that it's west, right? So 1.335 degrees west. So what we did so far in this entire problem, we found out what we knew. D, C, and L were all given to us in the problem. We looked at the formula for difference in longitude being equal to the, um, P is equal to D low cosine L, solving for it. And then we compared our two longitudes to get a difference here. And uh, we end up at 1.335 degrees west. I'm just going to move that back up here. We need to turn that into a certain um, actual degrees and minutes. And so we take this here, right? And we said um, one of the skill sets that we needed was to be able to convert between decimal and uh, degree. So we'll type that into the calculator, multiply that by 60, and you end up with one degree. and uh, 20.1 minutes west. So the problem asked us, uh, you depart latitude 25.54, and then um, you depart longitude 00938, and you steam due west for 592 nautical miles. Where do you land for longitude? One degree, 20.1. One degree, 20.1. All right, so that's, uh, that's one example of how to do it. Let's do another one. Right, for uh, parallel sailing's sake. And what I'll do is I will um, drop this into the chat box there. And it's also located in the description for the video down below, or if you're watching this at a later date, it's, um, it's in the notes included with the lesson there. So for this one, we depart latitude 15 degrees, 48 minutes north longitude 17406 east, and we steam 905 miles on course 090, so due east. So it's very similar to the uh, problem that we began with in the North Atlantic, the parallel portion of that composite sailings issue. So you steam 905 miles due east. What is the longitude of arrival? This is going to be identical to the uh, last problem that we solved. And notice that you're at 174 degrees 06 east. Where is that in the world? It's right near the, uh, the international date line in the Pacific. So the Coast Guard questions are always trying to trick you with something or better yet, test your knowledge. Uh, you need to cross the, the, the 180 uh, international date line here. So it's gonna get a little confusing for you. But the first step would be to kind of consolidate the information that we know from the problem, right? And so they tell us in the, uh, in the problem that we depart a certain latitude and longitude, we steam 905 miles due east, what's the longitude? Well, we know that our distance is 905 nautical miles. So that's great. We also know that our course is 090 degrees true or due east, right? Uh, we know that our latitude, right? Our latitude was given as 15 degrees 48 minutes north. And in the last problem, we saw that we can't really use it in this format. So we gotta have to go ahead and shift that over. So if you divide 48 by 60, you'll see that the, um, the latitude there is 15.8 uh, minutes north. So 48 by, divided by 60 is 0.8. We also knew that our uh, longitude number one was uh, 174 degrees and uh, 06 east. So why don't we do the same thing, convert that to uh, tenths. So we take this here, we divide that by 60, and it's decimal 1. So 174 degrees, or sorry, 174.1 degrees 
east longitude. So we've consolidated the information that we know, and, uh, and now we have to look at the formulas that we have. So that first formula, and you may be saying to yourself now, like you can kind of skip this step, and you, and you truthfully can, but uh, P, or departure, is equal to D sine C. So your departure, or your difference, or your distance between two meridians at any given latitude is equal to your distance times the sine of C. The sine of 90 is always going to be 1. The sine of 270 is always going to be negative 1. So for parallel sailings problems, you can omit this step and just see is going to end up being 1. So P is going to be equal to 905. So we'll call that P as well. And then the second of the two formula that you need was uh, P is equal to the difference in longitude, right? P D low times the cosine of the latitude. So P is directly proportional to whatever latitude that you're at. So your latitude, we said, was 15.8. And the D low is what we're looking for. And P, we had previously calculated as 905. So you can do the, the algebra shuffle here, right, and turn this into a, a usable fraction. Uh, so D low is going to be equal to the um, 905 over the cosine of 15.8. So cosine 15.8, 905, take that all into the calculator. You end up getting D low is equal to 940 uh, decimal six minutes. So the difference in longitude here at a latitude of 15.8, if you steam 905 nautical miles, is going to be 940 decimal six minutes of arc in terms of longitude. So that's the difference in longitude there. So if we turn this 940.6 into uh, something usable, degrees and minutes, you multiply it by 60, you're going to end up with 15.67 degrees. So D low equals 15.67 degrees. I'll just wipe all this stuff out. So that last step was just multiplying by 60 to turn it into degrees. And then, uh, so we've got our longitude 1, 174.1 east. We've got our difference in longitude, plus 15.67, which means we're going to the east. So if you, um, if you add those together, 174.1 east, and 15.67, where do you end up? You end up um, at 189 um, point seven seven degrees east of Greenwich. Right, because this doesn't make sense navigationally speaking. Uh, we're 189 degrees east of Greenwich. So we started out at 174.1 east, somewhere in the Eastern Hemisphere. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Eastern Hemisphere, we crossed the international date line. Now we're 189.77 east of Greenwich. This is a tricky thing. How do we turn that into something rectifiable? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't I plop the uh, answers into the chat box here and you can see what kind of uh, choices you're looking at. I give you the correct answer there, but they give you some that are all around the, um, the international date line. So it becomes a little tricky navigating this. The proper way to solve for this is uh, you could say, all right, take away 180, I'm 9.77 east now of the prime meridian. But if you want to turn that into westerly longitude, it's going to be 360 minus this. Because we live on a, a sphere, if you believe in that sort of thing. All right? So when you do that, you end up at 170.23 uh, degrees west of Greenwich. And now we can turn this into something usable. We'll take this here, we'll multiply that by 60, and you get uh, 170 degrees, 13.8 minutes west as the final answer. So the question asked us, Michael Miles, where do you end up? What's your longitude? Well, because the Earth is a sphere at the pole, 
the difference in longitude would be nothing. At the equator, it would be maximized. And at a latitude of 15.8, it's exactly that. That's going to be the difference there. So you can see on your license exam, they're going to give you some, you know, it's a multiple choice thing. They're just going to give, give you four answers to choose from. This is the correct one. We landed exactly where we needed to, um, which is great. Okay, so uh, there's one more way that these parallel sailings problems can be phrased. And instead of uh, solving for a DLO, um, we could be solving for a distance. So I'll drop problem number three into the chat box as well. Uh, if you're watching this later, then uh, it's going to be included in the notes below or, uh, or on YouTube, it's in the notes as well. So this question is asking us to determine the distance from 3418 South, 17240 East to 3418 South, 15238 East by parallel sailing. So they give you a clue in this problem that it's a parallel sailings problem. Um, we're in the Southern Hemisphere, we're in the Eastern Hemisphere. So um, Captain Mark on the Alcina there, it's right in your territory. I picked this for you. All right, so uh, let's write down the information we know. Our latitude is going to be 34, um, 18 south, 34 degrees, 18 south. They don't give us a D for distance. They don't give us a C for course, but they assume that we are um, doing parallel sailing. So course is either going to be 090 or 270, right? So uh, it's not going to be critical to the formula that we use, which is good. Um, and then the other information that they give us is longitude one is going to be equal to 172.40. And longitude two, our ending destination, uh, 152.38. Right? And so in essence, we know the DLO in this case. We know the difference in longitude. D low is just going to be longitude one minus longitude two, right? And um, we could do it in that format, but it's going to be easier if we just convert all that stuff, right? So we'll convert our latitude first. So we take that 18 and divide it by 60, and we end up with 34.3 uh, degrees south latitude. For our longitudes, we'll do the same thing. We'll take the 40 here, divide that by 60, and we'll convert that to 172.66 uh, degrees east. Running out of room there, sorry. And for the second one, we'll take this 38. We'll divide that by 60 as well. We end up at uh, 152.63 degrees east. So we've converted everything to decimal notation. All we have to do is uh, do the subtraction here. So I'll clear off some space. 172.66 minus 152.63. You can type all that right into the calculator, and you'll end up um, with the right spot. It's going to be 20.03 degrees for your difference in longitude. So to solve this problem, we kind of organize the information that we have. This ends up not being useful information. Uh, our latitude and our two longitudes and we're solving a parallel sailings problem. So we've got our difference in longitude there. In the other two problems, if you remember, um, we didn't ever have DLO in terms of this. We had it in terms of arc minutes. So if you take this 20.3, multiply it by 60, you'll end up with the, uh, oops, I made a typo, sorry. You'll end up with the correct um, number of of arc minutes there. So it's 1201.8 minutes there. And so now we can use the formula that we had memorized earlier. And the formula that we'll use is P or departure is equal to D lo cosine L. And we plug in what we know. It's a little easier than the last two problems that we had. It's just phrased differently. P is equal to 1201.8 times the cosine of the latitude, 34.3. Right? So type all that into the calculator. 34.3 cosine nautical miles. So what we're saying here is at a latitude of 
the difference in longitude is going to convert itself to 992.8 nautical miles on the surface of the earth right so why don't i drop into the chat the uh, four answers that the coast guard problem gives you and uh, this one's a interesting problem because the answers are all pretty close together so they're really testing your ability to be precise in the uh, addition and subtraction making sure that you do your calculator data entry correctly and uh, going from there so you can see the closest choice or the best answer is going to be 993 nautical miles uh, we ended up a little bit um, a little bit more accurate 992.8 all right so just to uh, just to wrap up what we did today if you joined in the middle you probably saw a lot of number crunching which is fun for some people I'll be honest I'm not a huge math person myself it's just a means to an end in terms of navigation but if we had a uh, destination position a and we were going up to position B one way to get there the fastest way over the surface of the earth is to do a great circle and uh, over, over any sphere, a great circle is going to be the most direct path uh, to get there. Sometimes you can't, though. Maybe there's an obstruction in the way. And so we can do what's called composite sailing by sailing straight east for a while uh, using parallel sailing and then doing a great circle from there. It's less efficient, but it's maybe safer depending on the conditions of the ocean basin that you're crossing. right? And so today we did some parallel sailings problems. And the key takeaways for this is that P is departure. It's the distance between two meridians or lines of longitude at any given latitude. Um, D lo is your difference in longitude. And D lo is going to be um, involved in a formula with P to help you determine stuff. So departure is going to be equal to D lo cosine of your latitude. Right, so departure is directly related to what latitude you're at, depending on where you're at on the earth. Because lines of longitude converge at the poles and deviate at the equator to the maximum extent. All right, so I hope you found that useful parallel sailings. That's just one element of uh, the broader category of sailings that you may find on your Coast Guard license exam or whatever uh, your governing body may be. And then that in itself is just one type of navigation problem that you can run into uh, when you're solving all this kind of stuff. So in the link, in the uh, description to the video box here, there's a link to a, a book called The Cutterman's Guide to Navigation Problems. I wrote that when I was sailing uh, and my hair was long and the Celestial Navigation video series on YouTube was made uh, on my sailboat, The Navigator. And it's a free resource. You can take it and it solves all of these types of problems for your exams or just for your general knowledge. Inside of it is a little subchapter on parallel sailings and uh, the sailings in general. So check that out if you'd like. Um, and then the other thing you can do is uh, if you wanna send me a note, if you wanna see in this Thursday night video series any particular topic covered, I'd be happy to do that. My plan in the absence of any other information is just to pick what interests me that day and, uh, and we'll talk about it. So this, uh, this little semester series will run every Thursday night Zero at uh, 1900 Eastern Standard Time or Midnight Greenwich uh, for the next um, about eight to 10 weeks. And then we'll take a break after that. All right, you can email me at chris at practicalnavigator.org. Visit the website, www.practicalnavigator.org for free resources, videos, um, books, all that kind of stuff. I'll hang around for a couple questions uh, if there's any in the chat box. Otherwise, I'll sign off. Okay, sounds good there. Uh, I won't even pronounce your name there, BC Misa. No worries, you can uh, email me anytime, you know where to find me, and uh, happy to answer those. The RPM fuel questions? Yeah, for sure. Um, um, and then uh, Brad, have you had a chance to look at the Cutterman's Guidebook? There's um, there's, I think, like three different types of uh, RPM fuel questions in there, and they're all very formulaic. You do have to memorize some uh, some formulas. One of the one of the first ones to start with is uh, just your generic fuel consumption problem. So, like your new consumption divided by your old consumption is equal to your new speed cubed 
over your old speed cubed. So you kind of um, you kind of memorize those, and you just all the questions that are going to come at you. They're going to be very formulaic. You just plug in what you can um, and go from there. Not RPMs. Okay, I'll take a look, and um, if you want to send me a, a direct message, I can get back to you on that, or better yet, email Chris at practicalnavigator.org, and I can respond directly to the question there um, regarding RPMs. Good copy. I'll make a note. Cool. Thanks, Brad. Have a good night. Okay, sweet. Thanks for watching Parallel Sailings tonight. This uh, this video will stay up. It'll render here on YouTube. It'll be up uh, shortly. And then uh, next week, same time, same channel, we'll get after some more uh, navigation problems. Have a good night. Chris out.